the, the first one and the, the more sort of kind of complicated, I guess, solution is the single wire earth return or the, the split phase site, which you kind of typically find in, in more rural locations like farms or cattle stations. So there are actually two kind of single phase supplies across each phase that are 180 degrees apart. So when you measure the, the phase to phase voltage, it should be around 480 volts. So uh, you've got sort of two, 230 or 240 volt supplies and single phase. And if you, if you actually just take a multimeter and measure that phase to phase voltage, you can really easily determine whether it's a swear site. And the other type of site that you might come across is a site where uh, there's actually a three phase supply, but they've just brought two phases of that three phase supply to the house. So in that situation, if you measure the phase-to-phase -phase voltage, it should be around your sort of 415 volts. There's a 120 degree phase separation between the two phases. And you know, that's typically maybe more, more of an urban area that you might find that type of two-phase site. So yeah, the more straightforward option, SIG Energy, actually the first that I've seen anyway in the industry to kind of modify their three-phase inverter firmware so that it will actually work. You know, you can install the three-phase inverter and the three-phase gateway and just use two phases of that inverter. And you can do, you know, all of the, you know, backup, all of these kinds of things. And you're just using, yeah, phases B and C. And it's a, it's a really nice, straightforward solution. You'll have balanced phases. The second type of two-phase site being the, the single wire earth return that I mentioned earlier. So when you've got a 480 volt and a 180 degree phase separation, um, so that there really is no solution to this without breaking down the site into two separate single phase systems, basically. So if you want to have batteries and backup on both phases, you actually need to install a single phase gateway and a single phase side and store on, on each phase and kind of treat them separately. So when you do it this way, they will appear as two separate sites in the monitoring portal, but you will then be able to get batteries and backup on both phases. The other option, if you just wanted to put, you know, one single phase system in, you can put a single phase gateway. So the three phase SIG energy power sensor, you can use that externally from the gateway to measure your, your net consumption from the grid. Uh, the, the other really common questions that we do get uh, you know, multiple distribution boards and, you know, the supply coming in and it, it gets a bit difficult, you know, where you want to install the panels and the battery is not necessarily where the, the main supply is or, you know, where you can install the gateway. So, yeah, you can see here, you've got your grid supply coming in to the grid port of the gateway. If you've got, and then if you're backing up the whole site, you can have that sort of feeding the whole site. And as long as your side and store is actually on that backup port, even if it's on a downstream distribution board, you can actually just have it connected there. The one thing you do need to do is make sure that you've got this uh, Cat6 connection going back to the back to the gateway for your communications between your inverter and battery stack. Um, but there's absolutely no issues with doing this. I suppose the other consideration is just making sure that this cable that's already installed is suitable for the size inverter that you're putting in to make sure you don't have any voltage rise issues, et cetera. Another question we get asked a lot is, can you do this connection between the gateway and the inverter wirelessly? The energy R&D are looking into a solution for this, but in the meantime, there are third-party products you can use to, to do this type of connection. Yeah, that's, that's the only solution at the moment to get a wireless connection there. The, the new SIG Energy Sub 1G wireless RS485 transmitter so you can actually use this to monitor your well either your your consumption of the property when you've got a metering point here and you you your house is over here for example you want to install the gateway and the batteries at the house and back up loads on the house uh, but you you also need to capture the full site loads from this metering point here say for example you've got another shed or a granny flat or something like that that you want to capture the consumption uh, for this situation you can use this sig energy sub 1g wireless transmitter so you can actually install your sig energy power sensor at the metering point here and the sub 1g transmitter uh, so you, you do need the rs485 connection between these two products here and then the sub 1g transmitter will actually wirelessly transmit the the consumption data or those RS-485 readings to the receiver here. 
which is then connected via RS-485 to the Sigen store stack, um, which allows you to get that consumption reading uh, without having to run a new cable if it's not possible to do so and have your system set up this way so, so that you can get the full site readings without having to run any new cables or you know locate your gateway all the way up here or the other thing i'd mentioned there as well is say for example you had a third party solar system on this shed distribution board here as well that you wanted to to monitor and ac couple your side store to you can do the same thing and install a power sensor at this distribution board with another set of wireless transmitter receiver back to your side store to then pick up the production readings from the inverter that's located at this submain without having to run the RS-485 cable, a physical cable back to that distribution board there. They have a load assist or peak shaving setting, which is kind of tucked away in the settings there. And it's a really handy setting. Um, we've come across quite a few sites. So the second time that this feature comes in handy is you can use this peak shaving control through the MySigN app to basically set that value and make sure you've always got some reserve state of charge in the batteries to deliver to the system to make sure that you never exceed that, that maximum allowable usage from the grid. Uh, so you can just see here where those settings in, in the MySigN app and what the different parameters are that you can program. So, and what I've seen you can do is you can actually set it up and what you can do is set a peak shaving state of charge which is basically the capacity that the batteries will reserve to always have available to deliver into the system to make sure you don't exceed your maximum peak power setting. So up until that point at the state of charge reserve, the system will operate as your normal self-consumption system and discharge the batteries to offset loads, charge the batteries when you've got excess solar, et cetera. And if it hits that peak state of charge percentage, it'll, it'll, wait until you know you're exceeding your maximum peak power setting there to always ensure it's got that energy available to put into the system to make sure you don't exceed that so uh, you can see here this is your maximum peak power setting and so you want to make sure that you never exceed this peak power here so and what, what the system will do is if you've got you know the moment you exceed that setting the batteries will start discharging to make sure that you don't exceed this maximum peak power and kilowatts here